Welcome to this Price a Job tutorial. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to estimate a strip foundation. In the previous video, we looked at estimating a trench foundation, and the strip foundation is very similar, but generally uses less concrete than the trench foundation, meaning the walls of the structure extend deeper into the ground. And you can see that clearly if we just switch this module over to strip foundation. So let's start from the beginning. We'll return this back to trench, and for our new module, We'll go to the Foundations category here in the Module Toolbar, open the Foundation submenu, and select Strip Foundation. Here we have a choice to add our Strip Foundation to the existing Foundation folder, so it will be side by side with the Trench Foundation, or we can create a new folder that keeps it completely separate. If we know that we want our new module to exist within the same folder, there's a shortcut that we can use by just clicking the plus add button here, and then click Strip Foundation. And this opens the Strip Foundation module within our existing Foundations folder. Next to each of our modules, we have three dots indicating a settings menu. And here we can either duplicate the module, rename it, or delete. Renaming here is convenient if we'll have several modules, each for a different area. For example, the main house, a garage, etc. Under the main folder, we can open the settings menu. And we also have the option of editing this. And here we can change the title of our folder. We can also set a location, currently set as general. However, we can also set this for any other locations that we've set already. And that can be done here under the Rooms tab. Here we currently have the main house with location 1. And here we could add a room to garage. We could call this Workroom. And then when we open our Foundation settings, we can edit this. And for the location, we have options for Main House Location 1 or Garage Workroom. We can also set the type, in this case is General. We can also specify whether this is to be a lump sum, a provisional sum, or a subcontractor. If, for example, we chose provisional sum, this would be then indicated on our quote. So if we check the Reports tab and we take a look at our quote, we can see that the foundation is set as a provisional sum. So let's go back to our calculations. We'll edit our Foundations folder. We'll turn the provisional sum back to a general quote. And we can also specify whether this module folder is optional, indicating that these modules are optional. We'll keep this clear for now and proceed with our Strip Foundation module. Here we have our Sketch Pane, Description Pane, and Estimate Pane. And on the side, we have our Stages Pane. Let's extend our sketch pane to full screen so we can have a better look. And here under the stages pane, we can set our various dimensions. As we click each of these dimensions, the sketch indicates with an indicator arrow to show us where the dimension is measuring. So the foundation run currently is set to 0 meters. Let's modify that. We'll set that to 24 meters. Then for the trench width, again, we see this indicated on the sketch, currently set at 600 millimeters. Let's adjust that to 800. And the excavation depth, indicated here on the sketch, is set at 1,000 millimeters, and we can leave that the same. And the concrete depth here, indicated again on the sketch, is set at 400 millimeters, and we can leave that as it is as well. Below our main measurements, we have the various stages for excavation, formwork, reinforcement mesh, disposal of soil, and concrete. If we decide that we don't need any of these stages, we can deselect the stage and it's removed from our estimate and our sketch. If we minimize our sketch pane here, we can see that the form work stage has now been removed from our estimate. If we add that back in, here the form work has been re-added. Let's take a closer look at these stages, starting with excavation. The Price of Job system has automatically calculated, according to our dimensions, that the volume of excavation will be 19.2 cubic meters of soil to be removed. We have options to excavate the trench by hand or by machine. And if we take a look at our excavation stage here in the estimate pane, we can compare the cost difference between the two. So for example, by hand, the excavation will be approximately 2,000 pounds, and by machine, 1,200. And this may seem counterintuitive when we consider the cost of the machine. However, if we look at the details of the hand excavation, we can see that the bulk of the costs for this comes in the labor. 
currently showing that 19.2 cubic meters will cost approximately 100 pounds each. We can change this unit from cubic meters to hours, and we can see that we're looking at approximately 71 hours to excavate this trench by hand. And this makes the costs seem much more clear. So let's select by machine, and we can now see our labor costs to excavate the trenches by machine. We'll convert this to hours. Only 30 hours to excavate. So the savings in labor is more than enough to compensate for the cost of the excavator, the delivery and collection costs, and the diesel to run it. We also have a drop down menu here that we can open to change the type of excavator that we're going to use. We can opt for a micro excavator or something much larger. Under the cog symbol, we can open this up to adjust the various settings for our machine, including the productivity in cubic meters per hour, the delivery and collection costs, and the fuel consumption per hour. These are all standard settings, and you can update them as necessary for your specific situation. For example, perhaps the delivery and collection cost will be 65 pounds. When we change this in the settings, we'll see that our delivery and collection cost is updated here in the estimate to 78 pounds. The difference between the 78 and the 65 is our profit markup. If we deselect the profit, we'll see that the cost of delivery and collection reverts back to 65 pounds as we have it set here in our settings. So let's be sure to include our profit markup and we can close the settings panel here for our excavator. Next, let's take a look at the formwork stage. We have options of selecting either nine millimeter plywood, 12 millimeter or 18 millimeter plywood. Also, we can select the size of timber we have choices here of 47 by 50, 47 by 75, 47 by 95, or 75 by 75. And as we make our changes, we can see that the estimate pane updates with our formwork stage here to show the shuttering plywood and the sawn timber that we have selected. For this example, let's stick with nine millimeter and 47 by 75 millimeter timber. And price -a job is very detailed in its estimate, including even the screws, and the labor involved in erecting and removing the earthwork support. Next, we'll take a look at the reinforcement mesh. Let's expand our screen. And if we were to deselect the reinforcement mesh, we could see that that's removed from the sketch. So we'll be sure to include our reinforcement mesh here, minimize our screen, and take a closer look at our estimate stage. We have a choice here to use a single layer of reinforcement or two layers, and then we can select the size of reinforcement mesh, either A142, a193, A252, A393, or a custom mesh. And if we select this, this offers a drop down menu where we can select a variety of different meshes, including B category mesh. So we could select here some B283. And this is updated here within the reinforcement mesh estimate stage. If we wish, we can click on the cog settings here to adjust the percentage of overlap for our mesh. And we can also set the spaces, whether we'll be using single chairs or continuous reinforcement bar. For this example, let's choose single chairs and we'll stick with A393 mesh. We can also adjust the spacing measurement. Next, we should consider the disposal of soil. If the soil will simply be disposed of on site, we can deselect this stage and our description is automatically updated to note that the disposal of surplus excavated materials is not included. If we'll be taking the excavated soil off-site, we can select this stage and note that Price -a Job has automatically calculated the volume of soil to be removed, 23.4 cubic meters. And you may note the difference between the excavated volume at 19.2 and the soil to be disposed of at 23.4. And the reason for this is the expansion of the soil. And we can adjust this under the cog settings here the expansion rate here is set at 22%. So we'll leave that as it is and know that we have to dispose of 23.4 cubic meters of soil. We have options here to dispose of this by machine or by hand. And again, we can refer to our estimate pane here to compare the costs of each. Disposing of the soil by hand with a wheelbarrow would be approximately 1,600 pounds. Whereas if we load it by machine, the cost changes to 1640. So a minimal price difference. Price -a job has also calculated the number and size of skips that we'll require to remove this debris. In this case, approximately 3.8 80 yard skips. If we prefer to order a different size skip, we can select the drop down menu and choose from the menu below. 
And of course, we are not able to supply only 3.8 skips. But if this module was combined with others in our estimate, the skip quantities would all be combined, so we're not sending any skips out, only 80% filled. However, if this is the only job you'll be using the skips for, or perhaps using them at different times, we can just round this up to the next near hole number by clicking the plus symbol. Next, let's take a look at the concrete stage. Here we have the options to provide ready mix, mix on site, or use a concrete pump. And again, we can refer to our estimate pane to compare the costs. Ready mix, 1200, mix on site, 1900, and concrete pump, 1850. If we're ordering a ready mix, we can specify the mix below, either C15, C20, C25, C30, C35, C40, or C45. If we click on the cog settings, we can adjust the minimum concrete load and part load charge. If we select mix on site, then we have options of setting our ratio, and we can set that for 1 to 3, 1 to 4, 1 to 6, or a custom mix, where we can specify the ratio of our cement and ballast. Let's stick with 1 to 3 mix. If we're ordering a concrete pump, we can specify the number of pumps we'll require, we can set the mix as we did with the ready mix, and under the cog settings, we can adjust the cubic meters per day, the minimum concrete load, and the pot load charge. If we find that there's anything missing from our estimate that we want to add, we can simply add it to the relevant stage. So for example, for reinforcement mesh, perhaps we would like to order a bit of extra rebar. So to do that, we would just simply click on the add new material, and we can either search from the library here, for example, rebar, and choose from the library the material that we want to add. So just click on this, and it's added to our estimate. Then we can set the quantity. In this case, we'll say 25 meters, and this is added to our total. Alternatively, if there is an item which does not appear in the Price of Job system library, we can just simply add it manually here. For example, perhaps some red oxide primer. And then we can specify our quantity. We'll say two tubs, and we can set the price at 680. Notice that the materials that came from the Price of Job library are indicated with an orange icon. The material that we added manually is highlighted in gray. And that's just a visual reminder to let us know that we input this material manually. If we would like to add this material to the Price of Job library, we can do so simply by clicking on the settings cog here and add to library. Then we can set the title, the net price, and the category. Likewise, if we need to add any labor, we can do so simply by clicking the Add New Labor icon here. And then we can add the labor for our rebar and primer. If we'll be creating various estimates for different areas, and we want to keep them separate, we can change the title of this one. Say, for example, we might call this Garage. Now we can go ahead and duplicate this module and then change the title of our duplicate. So rather than Garage 1, we can call this Outbuilding. And then we can modify the settings for this. For example, the length of the foundation run perhaps will only be 12 meters. And we might not require the red oxide primer so we can remove that, and the additional reinforcement bars, and we can remove that. And this gives us two distinct modules, one for the garage and one for the outbuilding. Notice as we've been making all of our changes, our description has been automatically updated with a nice description for all the materials and labor to be completed. If we'd like to add a note, we can do so by clicking Add Note, and we can use these symbols as bullets, either included or an allowance if we're unsure of a cost and just want to put an allowance sum. Or next for an exclusion. So for example, perhaps you might say disposal of soil on site. We can close this and deselect our disposal of soil. And this is now documented in our description. When we consult our reports, we can now see that within our foundation folder that we have the trench foundation the strip foundation for the garage with a length of 24 meters, and the strip foundation for the outbuilding with a length of 12 meters. And the exclusions are indicated here, disposal of soil on site. We have the choice to name our quote either a proposal 
or an estimate, or a quote, or a quotation. We can also set the level of subtotals to be shown. So in this case, this is just the grand total price. We can show the grand total plus the subtotal of this folder, or we can show the subtotal of the folder with the breakdown of materials, labor, plant and tool, and other costs. If we choose to show an advanced structure, this shows the complete breakdown of materials, labor, plant, and tool. And if showing this, we have the options to either conceal or show the description, conceal or show the material, the labor, the plant and tool, and other costs. We can also hide the pricing to just show a table of quantities or conceal the units. Up at the top, we have an icon indicating our foundation folder. We can hide that icon if we wish, and we can make various project notes if we wish. For bullets, we can choose the automatic bullets, or we can change the formatting to whatever style of bullets we wish. Diamonds, squares, arrows, circles, or none. We'll leave this set to automatic. Once we're happy with our quote, we can print it out, export it as a PDF, export it as a Word document, or email it directly from within Price a Job. And that is how to use the Strip Foundation module. Thank you for using Price a Job.